Hi, in this video we will figure out if it is possible to use a portable car jump starter as the welding current supply for the spot welder. And also take it apart to see what's inside. The car jump starter I bought for testing is the Suakoi U10 jump starter from Amazon. It is rated at 800 amps max current and should have a whopping 20,000 milliamp hour capacity. At 12 volts that would be 240 watt hours. Seems a bit optimistic to me. After testing, the real capacity turned out to be 6000 mAh, which is about 72 Watt hours at 12 volts. But we will get to that later in more detail. First let's see what parts come with the jump starter. The jump starter comes with a booster box, a power supply for charging and the jump starter itself. I cut off the battery clips from the booster output and crimped on some cable shoes to connect it to the spot welder. One positive thing here, the high power connection on the jump starter is an EC5 type. This is a pretty common connector on RC stuff and easy to get on eBay for example. Now let's see how to connect it to the spot welder. The negative cable goes to the spot welder's U-shaped aluminum part and the positive cable to the fuse case. Then the booster slash protection box is plugged into the jump starter. But even after turning on the jump starter there was no voltage at the spot welder. Turns out that the protection box monitors the voltage at its output and only turns on if there is 12V attached. After some reading through the manual I found that the output can be forced to be turned on by pushing the little button in the booster box. Problem with this is that the output automatically turns off after 30 seconds again. The spot welder works with this but turning it back on every 30 seconds is not practical. So let's take a look inside the booster slash protection box. By the shape of the box you could think there are some capacitors inside to help the jump starter deliver the high current peak. So I took it apart to see what's inside. Unfortunately there are no capacitors in there, just some components for the protective functionality and to control the big relay that switches the output on and off. The relay is rated at 70 amps which could be a bit low for the 800 amp current output of the jump starter. So it is better to connect the jump starter directly to the spot welder. To do this we could either bridge the red cable in the protection box or make a little EC5 adapter. I chose to make the EC5 adapter so I can put the protection box back together and have its original functionality. With the EC5 adapter the spot welder can now be directly plugged into the jump starter and then it turns on as expected and does not turn off on its own. It even stays on if the jump starter is switched off. Another benefit is that we eliminated the additional resistance of the relay in the protection box. That should allow for a little bit higher welding current. So let's do some test welds. For testing I placed two pieces of 0.15mm nickel strip on top of each other on a piece of wood. This way the testing is safe and if something goes wrong you just shoot a hole in the nickel strip. The result is pretty good. Measured weld current is around 500 amps, quite a bit lower than the advertised 800 amp current but still strong enough to get good welds. It is also possible that the current gets limited by my EC5 adapter. I had no thicker silicon wire on hand, so with thicker wire the resistance may be a bit lower. Now it's time to see what's inside the jump starter. There seems to be many different approaches on these devices. I've heard of jump starters that use MOSFETs or relays to switch the output. But this particular one does not switch the output on the jump starter itself. The EC5 connector is directly connected to a 3S 11.1V LiPo battery. So the only safety feature is the relay in the external protection box. The battery of jump starter is labeled with 11.1V but no capacity. It is a normal LiPo battery. I completely discharged and then charged it with my RC battery charger to find out it has 6000 mAh capacity. The size of the battery is pretty much exactly the same as the 5000 mAh Tunigi Nanotech. Some research in the manual showed that the 6000 mAh fit pretty good with the 74 Watt hour capacity on the product page in the manual. I still don't know how they got the 20000 mAh capacity rating but at least the 74 Watt hour rating is honest. Other than the battery there are just two PCBs inside the case. One has three LEDs on it and acts as a flashlight and the main PCB has the USB and charging connection and the display on it. The battery is charged slash balanced slash monitored through its balancing connector from the main PCB. 
Now let's do a battery duration test. To see how the jump starter handles many welds in a row, I modified the spot welder a bit so it automatically activates a pulse every few seconds. I then connected both welding tips to a piece of brass rod to simulate the nickel strip. The pulse time was set to 10 milliseconds. As you can see, the battery temperature rised up pretty high even with the jump starter's case open. After about 400 welds, it reached around 50 degrees Celsius. I then gave it a little 5 minute break and started again. After 800 welds total, I stopped the test because the battery temperature reached 60 degrees Celsius. This is the maximum working temperature a LiPo should be used at. At higher temperatures, the internal chemistry of a LiPo will start to get damaged, which will decrease the lifetime of a LiPo. So let's come to a conclusion. All in all, the build quality of this jump starter is pretty good. If you are only going to build small batteries with a few hundred welds, or maybe around 300 to 400 at a time, it's a good alternative. For building big batteries with thousands of welds, I would still recommend to use a standard car battery to power the welder. Thank you for watching and if you do have any questions, please leave a comment below.